There are growing concerns that there's a huge industry out there supplying medicines to us which is poorly regulated and as a result we're being misled, perhaps conned and sometimes maybe even harmed. I'm talking about complementary medicines. But before I go on, do you know what a complementary medicine is? That's the question we sent Casey Barros out to ask. What is a complementary medicine? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue to be honest. Natural herbal medicine that complements a more conventional medical product. I thought it would be free because it's complementary. Girls, what is a complementary medicine? It's um, a type of medicine that is used in combination with another. <laughs> um, I have no idea. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> um, I'm not really 100% sure, but I guess it's a medicine that isn't essential or that you don't necessarily need. I think it's a medicine that you take which complements the one that you're probably already taking. To complete the usual medicines they give you. But... What is a complementary medicine? Um, something that's free. Well, they're certainly not free, but they are things like herbals, supplements, vitamins, Ayurvedic medicines, any product where the manufacturer wants to make a therapeutic claim. Karen Carey, Tonic's Consumer Affairs Correspondent, and just to declare an interest, is also a board member of Consumers Health Forum, has been investigating whether the regulation of complementary medicines is adequate. Consumers are spending a lot of money on complementary medicines, uh, around $4 billion a year. So quite clearly people are voting with their feet, they want to use these products, they see them very often as being natural, safe and effective. I think most consumers assume that products that are on the market are safe, effective and of high quality. But is this assumption justified? Are these products safe and do they do what they claim to do on the label and in the advertising? The organisation that regulates complementary medicines is the Therapeutic Goods Administration, the TGA. Well Karen, the TGA is the government body that's responsible for authorising all medicines and medical devices that are available in the Australian marketplace. And we have a huge range of products to regulate. There are 65,000 individual line items on the register of therapeutic goods. And they do this with around 600 staff compared to the FDA in the US who have more than 17,000 staff to manage a similar number of products. So with tens of thousands of products and a relatively small staff, the TGA can't do everything. So they tend to focus on those products they assess to be a high risk. So for registered medicines, we evaluate in great detail both the safety and the effectiveness of the medicine. But listed medicines are only evaluated in terms of the safety of the ingredients that they contain. We don't evaluate them for their effectiveness, although we do require companies to hold evidence to support the claims of effectiveness that they make for listed medicines. That risk assessment is noted on the label of every product. An OST R means the product is registered and is a higher risk. An OST L means the product is listed and is a lower risk. All medicines that are included on the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods have been authorised to be supplied into the Australian marketplace. But for listed medicines, that process happens through an electronic self-certification process where a company that makes the medicine fills out an electronic form that says they've only used certain ingredients that have been pre-approved and they've made that product according to the standards of good manufacturing practice. Now that company has to certify that they meet the regulatory requirements, but we don't evaluate that product before it reaches the market to check whether those claims are backed up by evidence of efficacy. So there you have it. The TGA does not assess whether or not complementary medicines work. And when it comes to safety, we have to take it on trust. Trust that they've told the regulator the truth about what's in the complementary medicine and trust that they haven't put anything dangerous into the complementary medicine. I think consumers have a right to know what is and isn't regulated and I think it's, um, I think at the very least we should be labelling products that the TGA isn't regulating to say that these products are not actually tested by Australian authorities because I think the vast majority of consumers assume 
that that's exactly what's happening when it's not. They expect that someone in government is there to make sure that the products that we use are safe, and that's what we do. But we do rely on information coming from consumers and healthcare providers when problems do occur with medical devices or with medicines. And indeed, we encourage the public to report problems to us, either uh, by phone or via our website or fax or email. So it's really important that if you feel you've suffered a side effect or a complication from a complementary medicine you've been taking, that you tell the TGA or the medicines line about it so that action can be taken. We'll have details about how to do that on our website, tonictv.com.au. And as you heard, while manufacturers of complementary medicines don't have to supply evidence to the TGA to prove that their products work, they are supposed to hold it and make it available if asked. So if you want to know the evidence behind a product that you might be taking, why not send us an email and we'll ask the manufacturer for you. It'll be fascinating to see what sort of response we get. Mm -hmm.